Things ain't how they used to be. They don't make them like this anymore. Back in my day. Hello, my name is Incubus, and welcome to the Mind's Eye. As you can tell from the title, I can't help but feel like there's been something missing from showbiz lately. It's lost a step or twelve. As you can tell from that brief intro, it's strange thinking about never having thought that old school would apply to the leisure pursuits you grew up on. You certainly don't want to come off like some old fossil belly aching about yester century as you down your meds with a spoonful of Activia. But what if, despite the passage of time, you've managed to retain a healthy measure of your good taste? Imagine your standards haven't grown dull over the years but have actually kept you sharp. Now imagine not imagining it at all, because I'm here to reassure you, it ain't all in your head. Because if you've seen it all before, when things were great, wouldn't that exposure make you the best judge of what's good? If you'll indulge me, I'd very much like to look at the forest beyond the trees and maybe stoke the fires for a change. Having lived through the height of hip-hop, you think it'll always last. I don't know if you're the betting type, but I'll see your Drake and raise you an Eminem. My Jay-Z trumps your Kanye card. If we match queen for queen, you'd only mistake a Cardi B equal to Missy Elliott if you thought douches were wild. Comparing a royal flush with a bathroom flush is no comparison at all. If you think the rap game hasn't missed a beat, I doubt you can carry a tune. I don't even bother learning rappers' names anymore because they're so short-lived. The last song I liked was 2 Chains. We Own It from three quarters of a decade ago. You know music isn't thriving anymore when movies stop using it in their marketing. Titanic had the radio endlessly blaring Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On, Aerosmith's I Don't Wanna Miss a Thing on the Armageddon album, Elton John's songs in The Lion King. These were anthems inseparable from the movies they promoted. What was the song attached to The Avengers or Furious 7? Those films do billion dollar business which leaves today's music out in the cold. If you hear a song promoting a movie, chances are it's a 30 to 40 year old throwback from when people enjoyed radio. We've long since changed the station. If you would be surprised to hear that video games outpace Hollywood itself, well, that newsflash ain't half as shocking as its sequel. The following epiphany has been rated B for Bombshell. The gaming market surpasses motion pictures because they've had plenty of practice doing so for an excess of 10 years. The big screen has literally outplayed the silver screen, which is why I regret to inform you of the sad state of said industry. To truly understand the missteps of the modern, let us first take one step back to the last gen. Tell me if these 360 and PS3 games sound familiar. Killzone 2, Resistance, Infamous, Elder Scrolls. Hey, didn't franchises like Assassin's Creed, Gears of War, Batman Arkham series, Dead Space, Uncharted, Bioshock, Mass Effect, Red Dead Redemption, Last of Us all get their start between 05 and 2013? This go around, how many times were we subjected to the words first, true, next gen experience for games that ultimately failed to live up to the hype? Destiny, Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed Unity, Order 1886, Titanfall, The Division, Star Citizen, yeah, good luck. Other 8th gen dead ends. The Evil Within, Detroit Become Human, Prey 2016, Anthem, No Man's Sky. Sequels to cult classics didn't make an impact. Dishonored 2, Halo Wars 2, Mirror's Edge 2. Second attempts up at bat didn't fare much better. Destiny 2, Watch Dogs 2, Evil Within 2, Titanfall 2, The Surge 2. Hey, how'd that uh, Star Wars Battlefront reboot go? Shooters weren't all the rage. Console exclusives didn't move the needle. The Surge, Sunset Overdrive, Quantum Break, ReCore, Horizon Zero Dawn. They failed to justify the $400 hardware charge with games intended to lead the charge. They botched the development of original, marquee titles, and then force-fed you franchises. Oh, better luck next gen. 
Yes, you would find rousing successes like Doom 2016 and RE2 Remake, however, those two titles set two precedents for this video and this channel. Firstly, I don't discount the merits of any remake in any medium, but doesn't it detract from the celebration that it is fondness for the past that drives the present instead of additions to pave the future? Secondly, my intention here is not to depress you, but rather impress upon you that we belong to the worst creatively bankrupt generation. I remember when all entertainment was firing on all cylinders. Video games, movies, hip-hop, TV, comedy, pro wrestling. The problems I'm presenting are common threads across the board. Denouncing an art form does not entail the absence of quality offerings. There's just not enough of them. Would you like to know more? 2014 was the worst box office year ever. Wait, 2016 was the worst... No, 27... 2019? On the one hand, you might disagree what with every Marvel film banking a billion dollars. On the other, you might concur given the rise of stay-at-home streaming. My counter-argument is twofold. Yes, digital does take its toll garnering Netflix shows good business. Their original films leave much to be desired. Also, since Avengers Endgame grossed nearly $3 billion, it shows that people still go to the theater. They just haven't been given many reasons to. Ryan Gosling was the lead in Blade Runner 2048, Justin Timberlake was in a sci-fi film, Shia LaBeouf in sequels to Wall Street and Indiana Jones. Hollywood has always eyed young stars, but someone forgot to program these mannequins with acting. 20 years of scouting the shallow end of this talent pool has seen a roster of underwear models pawned off as legit leading men to audiences already hip to their act. I would ask, why isn't Hollywood looking for the next Brad Pitt or Denzel, but the industry should have been on the hunt 10 years ago so that they would already have the next DiCaprio or Bruce Willis. We don't get the Spielbergs anymore, we get the Dollar Tree variety like J.J. Abrams, who's just a bad remake attempting to outdo an original, and failing. I would happily salute John Carpenter riding off into the sunset if talent hacks like Jordan Peele didn't have his material graded on a curve and still get failing scores. The director of Robocop used political satire to deliver an action sci-fi classic. The director of Grossbusters 2016 used social commentary to push his politics in your face. Without visionary directors to think outside the box, who can we turn to to keep this wagon going and blaze new trails? Oh, I'm sorry, Guillermo. I meant actual visionaries. Over-reliance on CGI exploitation, summer blockbuster Michael Bay shooty-go booms has landed Hollywood squarely in the unenviable position they currently occupy. Just look at these duds. John Carter, Prince of Persia, Pacific Rim, The Lone Ranger, Green Lantern, Robin Hood. Folks, I like blockbuster action as much as you. But not every film needs a hundred million dollar price tag or to jumpstart a trilogy or a franchise. Do you realize that most of our classic films, Godfather, Rocky II, Mad Max, were made for well under ten million dollars? Those movies turned into blockbusters at the ticket booth, not at the production house. For my money, the film business needs to take more risks tighten up those budgets and double down on talented up-and-comers willing to rock the boat. Otherwise, face the music on a sinking ship. Wrestling is in the crosshairs of a crossroad. When the last of the honored legends leave the squared circle with no successors in sight. To learn where things went wrong, first a refresher of when all was right. Are you ready? I'll stooge to you what no news network will. A quarter of a century ago, wrestling was so popular that it wrestled fans away from Monday Night Football. But what about 96 could have snowballed? Break it down! <laughs> Is cooking. It's true. 
I wish that wrestling stole the show and never looked back, however, with its gradual erosion, as fans don't tune in or turn out, it struggles to pack the house even in smaller arenas. Fans of this business are the most vocal, as in vocal minority. You're welcome to hand wave away the glory days relegating it to crotch chops, middle fingers, and half nude women, but I would ask if your technical work rate is so much better. Why ain't it better? Could it be because it's deemed a bland brand by the mainstream? With people stuck at home, desperate for content, wrestling has a captive audience they can't capitalize on because they're not captivating. This has been the case for nearly 20 years, and them chickens done come home to roost, so I have no problem ruffling a few feathers telling you so. There's currently a Wednesday wrestling war that isn't. That's so gripping, this is probably the first time you're hearing of it. These shows don't even garner a 2.0 rating combined. We went from taking it to the NFL to cowering in fear of the NBA. Tired excuses will be made, but frankly everyone's to blame. Promoters, the writers, the wrestlers. The following essential criteria is treated as obsolete. In shape alpha males, charismatic megastars that have the crowds hang on their every word, compelling storylines between larger than life figures. Well, if we had that when things were great, and none of it now at wrestling's worst, the numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. Riddle me this what's the last comedy film you watched? Can you even remember? To gauge the tragedy of modern comedy, let's take a gander over at the funny papers for the con artists impersonating comedians. Aziz Ansari, Seth Rogen, Amy Schumer, James Corden, Adam Canover, Lily Singh. I can't be the only one who tuned into SNL's 40th anniversary reminiscing when it was actually funny. It was must-see TV, and now... Colin Jost and Michael Shea, Leslie Jones, Keenan Thompson bragging about being the longest running cast member as if he has prospects elsewhere. And what the hell is this? Eddie Murphy's career spans trading places, coming to America, the nutty professor. We used to get comedians like Jim Carrey, Chris Farley, Jerry Seinfeld. Have you even seen Kevin Hart's filmography? Would I even want to? I would rate modern stand-up somewhere between Spinal Fusion Rehab and Waterboarding. On that dour note. And now we take a detour on this trip down memory lane to the wrong side of the tracks. My neck of the woods. Hello darkness my old friend. Death has come to your little town, Sheriff. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Somebody please wake me up! Please! Candyman? Because it'll be dark soon, and they mostly come at night. Mostly. What do you mean they cut the power? How could they cut the power, man? They're in them. Red rum. They're coming to get you, Barbara. When there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk here. Candyman. Now clear your minds. He knows what scares you. Red rum. Oh God! Oh Jesus Christ! Red Rum! Candyman. Listen to them. Children of the night. What sweet music, thank my. Horror used to make stars out of people. Clarice, Hannibal Lecter, Sidney, Brad Pitt in Seven, Tom Cruise in Interview with the Vampire, George Clooney in From Dust Till Dawn, Candyman, 
It used to have iconic monsters, classic scores, memorable scenes, eye-catching posters, quotable lines. They're here. Be afraid. Be very afraid. What's the last horror icon you remember? What, Annabelle and the Nun? The two monsters whose own proper movies sucked? Four movies in, can we admit that this doll doesn't do anything? She sits, she stares, she wastes 90 minutes of your time, yours to watch for $12, overpriced popcorn not included! So whereas actual classics like Alien and Pinhead declined with sequels, Raggedy Ann and Mother Teresa started off trash. Horror has displayed a remarkable ability to provide commentary on culture. From Nazi Germany came the werewolf genre. The Red Scare gave us rise to the blob and invasion of the body snatchers. From McCarthyism we birthed the Crucible. You can't tell me that the genre that serves as a mirror for society now flinches in abject terror over its own reflection. Is horror afraid to find something it doesn't like staring back? In this opening video, we've painted with broad strokes. When you tune in for future episodes, we'll go over the fine print with a fine tooth comb. But for now, I leave you with a warning. Of monsters. Even a man who is pure in heart and says his prayers by night may become a wolf when the wolf bane blooms. And the autumn moon is bright. Fear not, fair mistress. There will be a reckoning. There's a storm coming. better batten down the hatches because what if it is you're all gonna wonder how you ever thought you could live so large and leave so little